On May 14, 1780, we received word that the combined army under Benjamin Lincoln had surrendered to the British in a devastating siege of Charleston. With this defeat, we have no force in the entire Southern theater capable of engaging the British. The situation couldn't be worse. Joint Command decided if we can capture the port of Wilmington, we can funnel supplies to local militia who can begin a guerrilla campaign while a new army is organized. My fleet has been ordered to escort the vulnerable French transports carrying the Commandant Jules César and this army that will take the city. Such a large convoy can surely not go unnoticed by the British. The Royal Navy still controls the sea. It's only a matter of time before a squadron is sent. The French have decided to use multiple types of transports with different speeds which has forced us to split the convoy in two. If the British catch us, the rear guard will hold them off while the faster vanguard escapes and engages. Wilmington. This afternoon sails were spotted on the horizon. British sails. These ships are no ordinary frigates either. They are state of the art and brand new. The transports will not stand a chance against the such impressive vessels. We must act. We must fight a tactical withdrawal while the transports escape. Reinforcements from the second group will arrive shortly. Yes, we must fight a retreating battle. So says the Admiralty. But John Paul Jones says, load the extra charge and we will shoot these frigates from 3,000 yards. <laughs> it's not really that far, but it feels that way. We're on the horizon, comparatively. Let's see if we can make any effect with these, these shots at this range. First salvo is out. Even with fire control teams, scattered shots and one bounce. Leading the target too far. Really just a waste of ammo. But we're telling, we can see you. And if we can see you, we will shoot you. We have the two second rates. I, these brand new frigates really, I don't think they're going to stand a chance. We might be in for a quick one, but lately the missions have been throwing more difficult ships at us. Sneaking them into the battlefield when I think I have an easy battle underway. We've sped time up a little bit. Bouncing shots, but not good for the morale of the crew to be taking shots at that range. We might switch to standard round shot. Perhaps. Or we'll just use all of our armor piercing rounds on these guys. Not very effective gunnery, but we're hitting sails and masts and some planking. Aiming for the bow of the ship, trying to get through, get some raking fire. We've oh yeah. See that proves it. We've got a fire and cannon damage aboard the Savage, the extra charge does carry a risk. We've lost one gun. That is unfortunate because we weren't really being effective and now we've lost a gun. 1%, just over 1% of our firepower. Those were good hits through, doing structural damage. As we start to get a better angle on the side of the ship. The shot will be more effective. But I have to be careful that they're not just running straight for the transports. I'm pretty sure we can destroy HMS Dipper before she can even get close. But the other ships might get close. So we are counting on our fire control teams to do a good job point out where the squishy bits are. Some of those rounds traveling through and over the ship. Be nice to get both ships to fire a big alpha strike at the same time. I've noticed that when you hold fire, the teams come off the guns, which is not ideal. <laughs> So you're best to reload the guns, then hold fire. Otherwise the guns don't get loaded. HMS Dipper's taking brutal damage here. She's starting to turn towards the fire, try, trying to angle the ship, but the armor-piercing rounds we're using... 
very fast flat trajectory and the dipper has exploded. Finally making contact with the fragile powder room. Aiming for the same spot on the HMS surprise. Let's see if we can unbox the surprise. See if she's got explosive power too. And then Taurus will be next in line for a battering. We've definitely removed the difficulty from this mission so far. Savage, another fire on board. I think we're more dangerous to ourselves. Lost two guns, seven deaths. But Solidarity doesn't seem to be suffering from the same thing. Who knows, maybe Savage has a little bit of bad luck aboard. If it happens to Solidarity, then we know for certain that that's the issue. Or Savage may just have that fiery temper. Okay, we're presenting our stern, but we've realized that the frigates are going to make it through to the transport, so we need to bring the port guns around. Making sure we don't shoot the Solidarity with the Savage. We shot off the mast of the Solidarity last mission with our own ship. Brought it around. It's going to be a messy shot, but let's see if we can connect with some. Yes, we have. We're under full sail now. Savage will slot in behind Solidarity, switching positions in the formation. Two ship formations are very easy to control. The next wave of transports have arrived on the minimap, and it looks like we have more enemy flags on the horizon. We will deal with the frigates, and then we will have a quick look at our new interlopers. Trying to get inside the minimum gun range of the Solidarity, but having the wind behind us, minimum gun range is pretty close. Savage is out of firing angle. Both the frigates are in a position to shoot on the transports, and they are doing so. Uraj has taken damage. Annabelle is also taking damage now. We need to hurry up. They have quite a few men on board, but they're not very sturdy ships. Alright, let's aim low. Hit the Taurus a center of the ship. And we switch to armor-piercing shells. Look at that damage. Beautiful. Imagine that with a carronade. So higher velocity carronades. That is an interesting concept. Just put 60, I think it's 64 pound carronades with high velocity extra charge. That's definitely a concept I will consider in my next playthrough. If we can get enough likes on the videos, I will consider doing the Barbary campaign pretty quickly. It's all up to you. HMS Taurus taking both round and grape shot. They have split through the center of the transport ships. We haven't been very good at blocking their advance. Preferring to shoot them rather than stop them directly. Oh, beautiful shots into the stern of the Taurus. Brutalizing her structural integrity and she's also taking fire from solidarity she's flooding the rudder's broken the pumps are broken half the guns are down the men are wavering and she is starting to sink it's sinking in spectacular fashion all of the mass splitting off as she explodes the fire quickly put out by their rapidly advancing seawater 
Surprise is also starting to flood. Some of her gun ports are underwater. Solidarity seeing this weakness. A few good hits on the powder room. Not enough to set them off though. Savage is going to turn around and start heading towards our new warships on the horizon. And it looks like we have third rate frigate and possibly a fourth rate behind. The rest of our fleet has arrived with the rest of the convoy. Solidarity is on fire and has lost two guns. But she's traded with surprise to unbox a nice explosion. So Solidarity will head off to meet her sister, the Savage. And they're going to go off and intercept these new ships on the horizon. The wind has now changed to due west, which does help our advance off the map. Though it does push us a little bit closer to the enemy. You do run faster running slightly across a wind, a tailwind rather than having it dead center behind you. So that could be actually beneficial for our escape. New ships on the board are traveling at 11 knots. And they're in a good position to intercept as well. Quite fast third rates. They are all upgraded now. And they are all devil dogs ready for boarding actions. Whereas the second rates will be focused on gunnery, gunnery, and um, gunnery. Sea wolves. Better sailing, stuff like that. That helps us get the ships around the wind, get the guns around on target. Fire, reload faster, and we also have tireless, which gives us more condition so we can shoot for longer. So I am liking the builds of the ships this campaign. I do feel like I have a customized fleet. The British campaign felt like I was the Borg. I just consumed you. <laughs> All ships must join the Borg. <laughs> the British. Losses were insignificant. <laughs> as long as we were still making gains. It's a real shame I didn't ever get to play the Battle of Trafalgar because my saves were just mysteriously gone after an update. That was very disappointing. They were actually gone. The Steam Cloud, the ones on my hard drive, just vanished. So I may at some stage play through the British campaign. It was a bit of a slog. I felt like a much longer and more brutal campaign than the British. Uh, sorry, the US campaign is. US campaign's been way more tactical. But of course, once we got the ship of the line, we, we jumped the difficulty curve. Sort of a lot of missions went very downhill from there because it was expecting you to still be running the frigates and running away from the British, <laughs> taking small wins when you could. Savage is in range with the standard round shot. We've hit the mast, the rigging. Decent effect. We do need to get the crew levels up of our two second rates, though. The ships have the skills, but the crew don't have the ability to use them. So at the moment, the Savage can use her first and second level skill, but she can't use Sea Wolves, which would drastically increase her gunnery. Solidarity only has the tireless trait, the level 1 skill. So the quicker we can upgrade their experience, the better. And I found that just shooting for a long time tends to put the skill right up. Wearing down the condition of the crew and then building it up again. In the British campaign, I had to really juggle my men around to keep the experienced men together. 
because all the recruitment was just diluting all of our experience all the time. And in that campaign, I was quite happy to throw a 750 man ship of the line into a boarding action to see if it would work. HMS Espoir has taken shots all over the side of portside bow. Now we're midships. She's a third rate Ardent class and I, I just think we're going to shoot her to death. We haven't shot many ships of the line but I feel like I don't need another third rate yet. I'm happy with my fleet composition and I'm really happy with the fourth rates. They punch well above their weight class. So I don't see myself phasing them out. Unless we just find a whole convoy of second rates with no men aboard that we can capture. <laughs> HMS Espoirs lost the pumps. Her, her crew are wavering. We've got another fire aboard the Solidarity due to the extra charge. So from now on, I may just use those for close range extra punch rather than that extreme range gunnery because it wasn't really effective even against frigates we have a we've caused a fire aboard Espoir and she's she's not long she's done for the 32 pound French guns at this range with extra charge were just cutting through the third rate slicing through her like a knife through butter very hot lead knife. <laughs> and she's now sinking. Can we get an explosion, please? You don't see many ships of the line explode, and I would like to see one. Now she's she's in big trouble. She's completely caught adrift in the wind. She's unable to change her sails by the look of it. They're trying to get the, the sails up. We just broke her mast off. That tacking through the wind probably causing too much strain. Let's change targets to Triumph. Sitting very low in the water as she tries to cut through our formation of second rates, but Ken, she's instantly surrendered. Instantly surrendered. And we barely shot her. We shot her a lot, but... We didn't shoot her for long. Let's get a boat in there quickly to capture her. That's just free. Free money. And just hope that Espoir doesn't manage to shoot our boat crew. That crew just was like, nope. <laughs> nope. We lost we lost the lead of our formation and you want us to sail through that formation? No thanks. The crossfire was too much. She might even flood. That's how much damage she took. HMS Sapphire is now caught between two second rate ships. That's a hundred, oh sorry, 90 guns facing her. Total of 180 aboard the two ships. Easy game. And again, like her sister, she's just been smashed through the wind. They've lost the rudder. Very dangerous. Now she's pre presenting her rear for our pleasure. Smashed off all the masts through the decks. Every type of damage available is now happening to this ship. And in the background, the Espoir has sunk. And we have defeated the British. Their brand new state-of-the-art frigates been destroyed and one has been captured for our inspection excellent we don't even need to get off the map we beat them so hard one captured ship the rest all sunk nice easy mission that will enable us uh, with decent rewards so that's going to enable me to get solidarity right up to par in terms of guns Next turn, she may have enough 32-pounders to be matched with the Savage. 
who did absolutely great job against those frigates. If you would like to see more destruction of British vessels, make sure you'll come back next time. Commander Tyrael, out.